The next one is the most recent Grant Morrison omnibus release, and that is JLA by Grant Morrison. I love this series. JLA was definitely one that revived uh, not only the Justice League franchise, but basically DC Team Heroes, Team Hero books as a whole. Here's a spine. This one's a brand new omnibus to me, so we'll be breaking it together. This is another one of those $150 omnibus. Morrison wrote uh, the first 20 or so issues of Justice League, but there was a couple of fill-ins that were done by Mark Miller um, and some other writers that uh, and Mark Wade that were not collected in this uh, this series that focuses uh, almost exclusively on uh, Grant Morrison's uh, written material. But this one is it just it's a soft reboot. Um, you don't need to know much about these characters. Something's happening on Earth. Aliens are invading. Who's going to team up to save us? Well, it's going to be Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, Wally West Flash, um, Aquaman, Martian Manhunter. I don't know if I said him yet. But uh, this is uh, definitely a series that you could uh, see that the Justice League uh, and Justice League Unlimited animated series definitely took inspiration from. Uh, we got the iconic Justice League here back together after basically maybe two decades of not working together in the same capacity, uh, at least not since the crisis on infinite earths. So it's a really, really cool series. He also pays attention to continuity. So if something's happening outside of this story, like for example, later on Superman turns blue for a uh, dumb reason. As much as I love Dan Jurgens, he decided to make Superman electric, which was ridiculous, but whatever, it was short lived. Um, he incorporates that element into the story without having to over explain it and dwell on it. So it's just like, Hey, you're blue now. He's like, yep. Okay. Move along with the story. So he, he doesn't, he, he balances that well where it doesn't make it confusing. It is kind of like, Oh, I wonder why that is. But after a minute, you're like, I don't care. I'm just going to go back to caring about the Grant Morrison story. Oh, here's a spoiler. I forgot. Um, at a certain point, and this is a spoiler for Sandman as well. Daniel, the second Sandman, uh, even becomes uh, a little bit of a, a main character in one of these story arcs. A JLA Earth 2. It's where they meet the crime syndicate of uh, what used to be Earth 3, but now for some reason it's Earth 2. Why they went with Earth 2 when they are originally from Earth 3, I don't know, but uh, just ignore it and pretend like it's the right way because the story is actually pretty cool. This omnibus wraps up with Secret Origins, actually. So, uh, this is a throwback to the 80s when Grant Morrison was writing a couple of Secret Origin um, chapters uh, in the anthology series Secret Origins. Uh, this one's about the Flash and Justice League. Um, just kind of cool. I'm glad they included this. It makes me wish that they they did so, they had so much detail put into this to get all the Justice League, Grant Morrison stuff. I really wish that in the Batman omnibus uh, that they included the gothic storyline from Legends of the Dark Knight and the uh, Arkham Asylum story uh, from, I believe, 1990. Uh, that would have made it feel a lot more complete, but I kind of get why they skipped it. Those those, those comics are not technically in continuity, um, and they don't really add too much to the overall plot, but it would just be kind of cool to see. Like, this obviously isn't going to add to the overall plot too much, but they still include it anyways. So, yeah, that would have been nice. All right, next up, we've got Seven Soldiers of Victory by Grant Morrison. Okay, Seven Soldiers of Victory. So what this is, it's kind of an anthology series. There's a few storylines going on here because I forgot the Guardian is also a character in this. It's Santana. Um, and, oh, and then uh, uh, the Witch Boy, uh, Clarion. So... Uh, I really enjoy it. I actually really like this inner cover. Um, so this is, yeah, this is Grant Morrison's uh, Seven Soldiers of Victory. They all tie, all these storylines uh, tie loosely together. Um, this was written right before he did Final Crisis. It's a, it's a gorgeous book. I mean, and the, the art style when it changes is just, 
it's smooth, but it's it's every character has the right artist on them. We follow some of these like lesser known characters. Um, maybe Zantana is probably the most popular uh, of the of this group right here. Uh, but what I do remember from this is like kind of understanding more about uh, Zantana's backstory, some of her origin. Um, then we get to meet the new Mr. Miracle, which uh, unfortunately we don't see too much more after this. They, they loosely tie him into Final Crisis, but uh, he doesn't stick around for very long. Um, what a big character that does come out of this is Frankenstein. Um, he joins a, uh, uh, a basic shield about in DC Comics called Shade. Uh, where it's a secret organization that helps protect the Earth using secret agents, but with monsters instead of agents, or as agents. So he becomes the leader, or at least a team leader in uh, Shade, uh, and that carries over into the New 52 even. So when this book was new, it retailed for $75. I'm going to warn you now, uh, if you find it on a low bid, watch it for a while. Um because I, I bought this one for 150 uh, which is double the cover price. I really was hesitant to do it, but this was the last book in my Grant Morrison collection uh, that I didn't have. I'm finally now getting to his one and only Marvel omnibus, at least that I'm aware of, uh, and that is the new X-Men by Grant Morrison. Um, I grew up in the 90s where I completely adored the animated X-Men series, Who Doesn't? But what actually got me into the actual X-Men comic books was uh, an issue of Grant Morrison's new X-Men. This is the, actually the second printing of uh, this series. I used to own the first printing, which um, had this cover. It had the uh, issue 114 cover. Um, and I almost didn't buy this second printing, but a couple of things uh, kind of drew me to it. I just like this. I like thematically. I like this cover a lot more than the other one I just showed you. Uh, the spine stayed the same, so we get the uh, group right there on the spine. The second reason why I decided to buy this was the first one. First printing came out in two thousand seven. I believe this printing came out in two thousand fifteen. The two thousand seven printing, the spine was one hundred percent glued to the. To the back so the rib arm oh, sorry the ribbon was glued 100 percent to the spine uh, this one's obviously not i think they made this one just because they knew they screwed that up uh, back in the early mid 2000s uh, when marvel started pumping out omnibuses for the first time uh they definitely had some learning curves um their gutter loss was terrible the pages were ripping out they they had some horror stories all right, so if you are 100% new to X-Men, Grant Morrison's X-Men can be a good jumping on point. Uh, I would recommend, if you can, uh, try reading at least some of the highlight like X-Men stories like Giant Size X-Men, The Dark Phoenix Saga, Days of Future Past, maybe even Mutant Massacre, uh, all those classic storylines if you can, uh, if you're really trying to get into X-Men. But this... This pays, like everything else Grant Morrison does, this pays homage to uh, that Silver Age, uh, the Silver Age comic book world. So what he wanted to do was not 100% repeat what uh, Chris Claremont did. And actually, let's look at the spine real quick. That's, that's a really cool wraparound cover. I didn't notice that one before. Look at that. Say you don't know anything about X-Men. Well, he wants to do a lot of the things that made X-Men popular. He wants you to... He wants to reinvent the Sentinels. He wants there to be a foe who uh, is not Magneto, but someone who is just as threatening but more updated. So we have like a genocidal version of Professor Xavier. Spoiler, it is actually his sister. If you, if you just read it as one whole story like this, it feels like a freaking epic X-Men story. I mean, it goes through everything. It goes through all the the discrimination problems they're having. They have machines hunting them. Fathom X, uh, he's, he's kind of like a newer version of Wolverine. Um, Cyclops and Jean Grey have a love triangle kind of thing going on with Logan. Uh, 
Jean Grey and Cyclops are married in this, but there's it kind of seems like there's probably some side action happening. Um, Xavier wants to reopen the school, uh, revamp it, I should say. Uh, there's a lot of stuff with the Shi'ar Empire, who uh, um, are under uh, the control of uh, Lalandra's sister. Uh, I believe her name is Deathbird. Um, it, it does almost... You could almost beat for beat, like, compare it to a Chris Claremont story. But it's just... I, I want to say it's like the ultimate version, but there's already an ultimate version of X-Men. Like, it's literally called Ultimate X-Men, and it's an ultimate alternate universe. So it's not really that, because this is in continuity. It just does it again, but a little different and very modernized. They take a lot of, like, uh, liberties with um, calling this a superhero book, because it's, it doesn't really feel like a superhero book. It feels like just this sci-fi epic movie. Like, it feels like... It feels like how you want the X-Men movies to be. Uh, Magneto is uh, one of the ultimate villains, or at least a version of Magneto. I won't spoil that too much. Um, it goes through the whole Phoenix Saga, and you know how the Phoenix Saga ends. It's not usually happy. Uh, and then it does its own future Days of Future Past storyline. So, I mean, you get, like, beat for beat, not the same story at all, but thematically... Everything that people like about the X-Men in one freaking book. Sorry, I get excited about this series. I love this series. Uh, I know a lot of people think it deconstructed the X-Men too much. Uh, I would argue that the 90s did worse. So, yeah, Grant Morrison's X-Men. If you could get this, um, this is a second print, but they do uh, they do restock it pretty regularly. It looks like it retails for $125, but... Like anything on Omnibus, if you're waiting on it, uh, you may be sorry later because these things will just disappear overnight. All right, I'm going to wrap up this uh, video with just three more Omnibus. Uh, I'm not going to do a table side overview with them right now, uh, and I'll explain why in just a second. So uh, the first is DC 1 million. The reason why I'm not going over this right now is because we kind of went over the contents of the Grant Morrison stuff in the JLA omnibus. So the DC definitely double dips with these two right here. Um, as a whole, this, here, this is a really cool omnibus because it collects the rest of the DC 1 million, which there's gotta be about 50 of them. So DC 1 million is one of those omnibuses. Uh, the reason why I said we'll do a table side with these is because we are going to do a, a DC event omnibus collection. Uh, another one that's gonna be overviewed with them is 52. So Grant Morrison wrote uh, some of the Batman sections of this book. The sections he wrote for 52 were actually collected in, I believe, Omnibus Volume 1, uh, Batman Omnibus Volume 1 by Grant Morrison. So this is another one we'll do a table side. Um, this is a very popular series that has a lot of very popular writers and artists on it. Um, people like it, and it's for a pretty darn good reason. Uh, and then the last is the big old comic book event called Final Crisis. So Grant Morrison wrote the main series for Final Crisis. He wrote uh, Superman Beyond and I think a couple of other one-shot tie-ins. Um, this omnibus collects not just that, but every single tie-in with it. Uh, the stuff that was written by Jeff Johns for The Flash. Uh, we've got, you got it. We got a lot of stuff in here. Legion of Superheroes, Jeff Johns. Some Batman, Superman, some Teen Titans. It's a lot of Jeff Johns in here, actually, too. So we'll have to pull this one back out when I do a Jeff John, every omnibus Jeff Johns uh, video in the near future. Well, that's it, guys. I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Um, if you do enjoy what you're seeing and you want to see me go over some more complete collections or uh, are interested in knowing anything about, shoot, comic books in any form or fashion, I'd love to talk about it. Uh, so just leave me a comment. Uh, if you like the channel, uh, please subscribe. And yeah, I hope to have more content out soon. Take care, guys.